In this video, I'm gonna show you two different animation techniques. For the Flatpak FX crew members, you can download the project files via the link in the description. If you're not already a member, then you can also learn more about it by the link in the description below. Also, a quick reminder that I've started my Black Friday sale. All of my courses and products are on sale along with all of the bundles as well. This is my biggest sale of the year. So if you've been holding out to try and get one of my courses at a big discount, then this is the time to do it. The sale's only gonna be on for a short period of time, so make sure you take advantage of it. There'll be a link down in the description, otherwise you can go straight to flatbackeffects.com and you can see all of the courses and products that are on sale. There's two animation techniques I wanna show you. One is this background here, this sort of fade on effect for the text. And the other one is about creating outline effects. First, I'm gonna create a new composition here. This can be whatever you like. Then from here, what I'm going to do is I've got this image here of the armor. Now this is going to be whatever image you're going to use for your stroke outline effect. And I wanna create that outline effect. So there's two main ways that you can go about this. The first is that you can just come up here and use the simple choker. Now what this does, if you basically scale it down, it'll extend the edges of your image. Now that's a really simple way just to add that effect. The downside to this is it only adds that to that image. So you can't basically separate them. The other thing is it's basically stuck as a white, unless you use a different process, which I'm not gonna cover in this video, but I do cover in my Animation Pro course. If you wanna learn more in depth about how to create those sort of Vox style animations and you're more comfortable using After Effects, then my Animation Pro course is definitely worth checking out. There'll be a link in the description below. I dive much deeper into different animation techniques that you can use to really take your animation to that next level using a lot of layering and overlay effects to really create animations that stand out. If you're brand new to After Effects and you're not really comfortable using the program, then you wanna start with my Animation Master Course, which really walks you through from the absolute basics of never having used the program before, right through and how to actually be creating some really cool animations and effects. There's lots of student testimonials and reviews that you can also watch from lots of students who have taken those courses and had amazing transformations and results in their skills. So if you're really interested in learning animation or you wanna take your animation skills to that next level, then check out those courses via the link in the description below. So that's one simple way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that layer and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to add that simple choker back onto that layer so it kind of sits in there behind. And what I want to do to this is I want it now to basically be moving separate to that layer underneath. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add just a really quick fill and that's going to basically create that solid color that sits underneath. Now that's not the way that I cover inside the course. In my paid course, I go into a lot more detail about actually how to combine the two together because it's not always the best option to have them as separate layers. The reason that I'm doing it as two separate layers here is because we now have control over that second layer. So what we can do is with that position, I'm going to hold Option or Alt on my keyboard. I'm gonna click on that stopwatch and I'm gonna paste in this wiggle expression or type it out. It's wiggle open bracket 0.7 comma eight close bracket. Now what that does is it allows the background sort of outline effect to move around the screen. So this allows us to basically have control. If I link this one to the top layer, I can move this around, but it's also moving independently. If I say move the second number to 18, that's going to make the movement a lot bigger. If I scale up on this front number to say 10, you'll notice that it'll move a lot faster. So the front number controls the speed and the back number controls, you know, how much do you want it to be moving around? I find that that number there is probably about right. Now, before I add on the second layer of effects to this, what we're gonna do is take those two layers, I'm going to come up to layer and then down to pre-compose and just basically move all of those attributes into a new composition. So we've basically got that comp and I'm gonna set it over here. Just turn that off for the time being and I wanna work on creating the rest of that composition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my castle layer, drag that in here, 
and I'm gonna just sort of reposition that. Now what you can also do is just kind of flip it here and then sort of reposition it if you wanna move it around. And what I want to do to this is I'm going to create a new solid here. This is going to be sort of uh, just a solid black. I'm going to position that over the top there. And I'm going to scale this down to around sort of 40% somewhere around there. Then what I'm going to do is also create another solid here. And this one's going to be called my grid. So I can basically come up here and just add the, I can generate a grid. And for this, what I'm going to do is just sort of drag down on those borders. And for this, this is the settings that I've used here. I've just changed the width slider, scaled this up, and then sort of messed around with the border size here, maybe to around three. And then what I'm going to do is toggle the switches and I want to make this as a overlay. So the overlay is going to help that blend in really important. I talk a lot about this in my uh, two animation courses but basically it really helps all of this sort of blend more seamlessly together. The other thing that I'm also going to do is I'm also going to create a new adjustment layer and I can just add a hue and saturation. You can search for this up here and then drag it down here on top. And I've just desaturated this image, it just sort of helps create a more consistent tone. And with that grid, what I'm also going to do is hit T and I can scale this grid right down the opacity. So maybe around sort of 20%, something like that, just to help all this sort of sit in nicely. I'm also gonna turn back on my night layer here and I'm just gonna reposition that roughly around there. And now I can sort of mess around with this blending mode. What I'm going to use is lighten, but you can mess around by using any of these different blending modes to sort of really get this all to sort of sync in nicely. So that's looking quite good. What I want to do is add the final thing, which is the actual text. And I'm gonna position this. And I wanna add a few things to this. The first thing I'm going to do is add the extract. So again, we're using this up here to basically add these effects on. Then I'm gonna drag down on the white part and that's gonna remove that background, just a really simple way to do that. Then I can basically fill this over the top. So it's gonna fill a solid color over that whole layer. I'm gonna change the blending mode to be overlay. And then if I hit T, I can mess around with that actual sort of opacity, maybe something like that. I can even scale this up here. Maybe with that background layer, I'm gonna scale this up as well. So we can see that a bit better. A really easy effect that you can add to this is called the CC Film Burn. So this is built into After Effects and all you need to do is basically just scale this up and down. It creates that basically exactly as it says, a burning film effect, which is, can be really cool to sort of fade on various layers. So what I can do is start this back here and maybe scale this down to zero. And with the one in the beginning, what I'm gonna do is drag this up. So we sort of end up with this interesting fade effect. If I hit U, I can bring up those keyframes, also make them easy ease. That looks quite good. What I can also do is if I take that CC film burn effect, copy it, and now go to my pre-composition, which has this layer. Then I can take that background and add it to that. So you can see that it kind of adds that effect to that background or fading it on. Now you can off center this effect. So if I bring up those keyframes, cause we've already created them, I can basically just move them across here. And with that layer, I'm going to create a position property. So this is for the top one and then bring this up into that position. So we kind of end up with this moving up like that and then also make these easy ease. Turn on motion blur for these because we want a bit of that motion blur in there. Maybe drag this layer in a little bit. So you can see that effect sort of playing out. Something else you can also do is if you don't want that full effect, sort of drag this in and reposition the actual point here into the middle. So that's basically where you want it to originate from. And you can also dial back the, you know, if you don't want so much 
basically edge on here, you can just dial that back. And that's pretty much it. That little film burn effect is a really underutilized little built-in uh, effect that you can use on pretty much any layer. It works really well for creating that sort of consistent style across all of your animation. So if you use it once, it's a good idea to be using it over multiple compositions just to kind of help tie everything together. Here in my original, all I then did was I basically just created a null object and I linked those layers, all those background layers to that grid, to that null, and then just created basically just a set of scale keyframes here to have the background sort of expanding as this is sort of then going on. You can mess around by adding some additional effects. If you're part of the Flatpak FX crew and you download the project file, I've also added some in extra effects, which you can see when you open up this exact composition. I really wanted to kind of create this video because I think it's just a really cool effect that you can apply to your next project and something that probably a lot of you didn't even know was built into After Effects. That's it for this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can also check out more videos just like this one over here on the side of the screen. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.